Hey, it's Dr. Linda Davis, and today I want to pick up where we left off. We uh, completed a table in, for um, Microsoft Revenue and Net Income, and we pulled those values from Morningstar.com, and we formatted our table. And next we want to do is we want to um, build a revenue graph, and we want to format it, and we want to get it ready for possibly get it ready for a PowerPoint screen. So we have to do a few extra formatting things to make that happen. So we have the table uh, in sheet one. I renamed the table. Um, I mean, I renamed the sheet table. So if you do need to still do that, just name, uh, double click on where it says sheet one and just type in table and then hit enter and that locks it in. I also uh, added a sheet. So I click on add a sheet if you need to. Uh, the second sheet, I have double clicked on it and called it revenue graph. And I don't have anything in there right now, but I've got it ready when I do. Let's go back to your table. So click on the table sheet if you renamed it. And I'm going to create a revenue graph in this particular video and get it ready for PowerPoint. So I am going to um, highlight the year, the word year, and the actual years. And then I'm going to also highlight revenue and the actual revenue values. And that's all I need right now to build our revenue graph. I don't want any net income figures in that. So highlighting that, I'm going to go up to insert on my menu items, and I'm going to go to charts. Charts, same as graphs. Um, the one we're going to use today is called a scatter, S-C-A-T-T-E-R, which is found there. And there's choices. There's different kinds of scatter graphs. So let's click on that and see the choices. Um, we just want the ones that's the just the dots, you know, no connected lines or anything like that. So we'll click on that. And we use that when we have uh, numerical X data, which we do here. They're years, but it's still numerical. So I want to grab this and pull it down. And, um, you know, I can initially pop it underneath my table. And um, it's like a graphic. Uh, it's like an image, so you can just actually copy it, and we can go to the revenue graph sheet that we renamed, and um, we can paste it in here. So I'm going to go uh, probably back to B3 and just paste it in there. Control V or right click and paste, either way. Control V um, is, is uh, V as in Victor, in case you didn't know that was the shortcut on your keyboard for paste. Now, um, so with this one, we're kind of getting it ready for PowerPoint, so I don't need a title here. I'll add that back in PowerPoint, so I'll delete that part that says revenue. I also want to stretch it to fill my screen, so I'm going to go to the bottom corner, stretch my graph to fill my screen from the diagonal, and um, I also want to take the size up. It says 10, and I really would like to take it up to maybe like 14, get a little more bold looking, maybe even 16 actually. Let me pop it up to 16. and. Um, there's some things on here I really don't need. I don't need these grid lines that are vertical and horizontal. I just can click on that and notice it activates them all the way down. That's your vertical grid line act that's activated with those little bubbles at the top. And then on your keyboard, hit delete. And on the uh, horizontal, we have the little bubbles all the way down. Hit delete to make those go away. Don't Rarely use rarely use the grid lines, so we like to get rid of them. Now, um, the axes, both axes need work done to them. The y-axis, for instance, has every half year. I don't need that. So, And this is how this works. You can double click about on anything in a graph, and it, it will come up with a panel that helps you format that um, particular part of the graph to be what you need it to be. So for instance, the years. I'm just going to click on any year. It doesn't matter. Double click. And um, I'm just going to click on that. And the panel comes up, says Format Axis on the right. It's kind of new with the newer versions of Office. Everybody out there has got different versions of Office, but, um, you know, you're always going to encounter that, so you need to be able to work with whatever you're given. Uh, on this one, I have Minimum and Maximum. What year do I want to start with? You know, what year do I want to end with? So um, I'm going to take it back to 2014. And I'm going to take the major, this is the part I was talking about, the major unit. I want it to be a 1, not a 0.5. That's why I was getting every six months. So go back up to maximum. Um, I'm actually going to take this out further than the data. The data stops at 2019. and I, But I'm going to take it out to 2022 because I want, to, I want to forecast eventually. And I need those extra years out there to be able to forecast. So that's my min and max for right now. 2014 for the min, 2022 for the max. Um, the uh, tick marks, you might want to add some of those. So um, 
expand the tick mark section. That's just those little hash, hash marks that's going to show up next to each year. I want some, so I'm going to put them on the inside just so I can see the inside here of each where it should be. Since a year is such a long, you know, takes up a lot of space. Where's the actual point at? So that's what that little mark does for you. And um, next I want to go over to the y-axis values. Okay, so they have, uh, you know, it's, not, it's 100, it's revenue in billions. So you have to think about what kind of y-axis is it? Is it just numbers? Is it money? And if it's money, what kind of money is it? Is it cost? Is it revenue? Is it profit? What is it? So we want to uh, adjust these and we need a little axis title out here. So I'm going to um, go to chart design that pops up when your charts activated and um, I can go into add chart element on the far left. Click on that and go down to uh, axis title because that's what we're adding an axis title and it asks you you you're talking about the vertical one or the horizontal one well I'm talking about the vertical one so all it's going to do is give you a little text box there which it just did for me and I'm going to click in there and I'm just going to rename this um, and delete out some of the stuff that's set for axis title um, and instead say revenue and I usually put the star in billions you remember because we we did say that these values are in billions so everybody knows that that looks at it now I also want to um, check on these values I don't really need to say 0 0.00 that's just excess I don't need so I'm going to just again double click on any y-axis value it doesn't matter and I'm going to see format axis pops up but I'm gonna go to the last one there axis options and um, I'm gonna adjust a couple things not just the dot zero zero I'm I can do that down here uh, under number the last thing expand that out and it is currency so leave that uh, I don't need two decimal places here though I'm gonna back off of that leave my currency symbol um, also I want to adjust the range the min and max the bounds as they call it min and max um, I noticed that my values are kind of hugging the, the data points are hugging the upper part of my graph and I kind of want my data points in the middle so I'm going to um, work on that a little bit too because you don't have to start with zero down here I mean if there's no activity down here you can start at 20 or 40 billion you know um, so maybe my bottom might be 40 just put 40 in there for minimum now my max um, I mean it goes up to 140 on this but if I forecast out and it looks like everything's trending upwards I might want to take it up to like maybe even 180 or something let me just look at it I mean I can always go back and change it if I didn't if I didn't go high enough I don't want to run out of room um, on this so notice how when I reset that um, to 180 for the top number and 40 for the bottom number that my data points came down now they're more in the middle of my graph and I've got a little room to expand here and it still may not be enough as far as um, the, the uh, value of that top number but I can always go back and fix it if if that's if it's uh, needs a little bit of push forward more let me exit out of this now just so I can see everything notice I've got my years drawn out to 2022 now so if I have a little room to forecast forward a couple of years just to see where it might end up right in 2021 and that's what we use linear linear regression for is to forecast forward and see you know what a couple of years might look like based on this historical data so um i noticed this did not i mean may, may not have put that back to zero like i should let me go back to that let me double click on the y-axis values and go down to number so i could yeah i didn't take it back to zero it's on two that's why it's showing me two decimal places let me put a zero back in there good okay so we got that exit out of that now let's see what else we need to do now there's some trend uh, I'm getting if I'm getting this ready for PowerPoint now if I'm leaving it in Excel I wouldn't do this but if I'm going to PowerPoint eventually with this as we I'll show you with some PowerPoint stuff we do later on that we have graphs in them um, I want to I got to get rid of the white there's white uh, backgrounds on the chart and plot areas so I want to go to the chart area and um, just double click oops double click on the uh, chart area and this says chart options here um, and go to fill that it's filled with white you may not realize it but it's filled with white so you can say no fill and um, under border uh, also say no line and that gets rid of the border as well so we don't need all that um, for what we're gonna do now in the 
I can click also in the plot area. The plot area is the more interior part that's activated right now. It says plot area over here. I say no fill, no border on that as well. And um, you can kind of start seeing, let me exit out of that for just a sec. You can kind of start seeing now the little grid lines start popping through that weren't there before. So that lets you know it's it's kind of become transparent because why do you want it transparent? Because when you go to PowerPoint, uh, you want it to take on the background of whatever the PowerPoint color is. Now, at this point, I can pause. Uh, the next video will be uh, taking this where we left off here, and then it'll talk about adding the linear regression part to this. Um, and the only thing else I'd want to do here is do some more formatting to get some colors going on with this. Um, if I have a dark background, which I probably will since it's any kind of business PowerPoint background is usually dark, um, i got to change my font colors and stuff. So let me go in there and work with that just a bit. We, um, we want to make everything big, bold, and colorful since it's going to PowerPoint. So um, for instance, I can take my y-axis value uh, and just change. I can make it bold. And then I can also change it to a different color. I tend to go for like more fluorescent kind of colors. Like I might do uh, a bright, uh, ooh, let me go two more colors there. Um, I might do something like, you know, bright green uh, for the axes. Let me change that one as well. I kind of went elsewhere, but let me go back to that bright green for the text color. I'll use that again. Oh, it needs to be bold as well. Um, the chart title that could obviously you don't want it to be you don't want it to be dark either. So let me change it to some other color that's bright, like maybe a bright blue. Bold it as well if there's room for it. There we go. And then um, even the axes uh, lines here we can bold them up too and make them colorful. So let me that's a little sometimes a little trickier to get on there. Um, but I think if I'm on that, I can go to um, the fill color, and hopefully, I want to do um, make sure I'm on. It actually activated the right thing. Let me do the green again. Make sure it's. Oops, nope, that didn't that hit the wrong one. Control Z. Okay, that hit the fill, not where I want it to be. Okay, here we go. Let's see our axes lines. Let's try that. Where it says width 0.75, which is really tiny. Let's see if that affects my axis line. Yeah, I can see my x y axis line getting thicker and thicker and thicker the more I um, correct that. And I can also take it up to like maybe three and a half or four is good usually. And I can make it a different color. And right above that, there's transparency, and then there's color. You can make whatever color you want it to be. If I want it to be the same green, um, you know, I can do that. And I can do the same thing on the, um, you have to get right on that, and then horizontal, yeah. Let's see if that'll switch over for me. Uh, same place. Color, let's make it. The green again and then bump up the width on that axis line you can see it growing 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 take it up to about four point and um, so it really stands out more the data points they're kind of little uh, you can double click on those and you'll get the ability over on the right to format your data series which is what they call it um, you can make sure you're not online but you're on the actual marker that's what they call the data points is markers and make sure you've got marker options expanded sometimes you don't catch that when you kind of make a mistake uh, marker options are like this so you can pick the shape maybe you want a triangle shape a diamond shape i'm gonna do diamond shape today and i the size this is where you adjust the size of the actual marker or data point i want to take it up to something kind of large, maybe 12, maybe even 14, just depends, you know, somewhere between 12 and 14. Um, and, and once you do that, um, you are in pretty good shape. Now you may have asked, why didn't you put year for the um, Y axis or X axis um, name? And I just decided, you know, you just gotta know your audience. You know, if, um, if you think they're gonna, you know, 
readily assume that's yours and that's fine. If you think there may be some question in their mind about that, that maybe it's not your usual group you work with, you know, you might want to put in the access title for year down there. So that's up to you and your situation. Okay, so we've got some bright colors. Um, I might want to bring those data points a different shade. So if you want to change the color of your marker, here's the color part. It's just kind of on a blue. Uh, if I want it brighter blue to go on a dark background, you know, I might pick something like that instead. Okay. So fiddle around in all those plot areas and chart areas and just realize whatever you double click on is what's going to show up over here on the right panel for you to fix the way you want it. All right. So we've got that. And uh, at this point, um, this is, you've got it formatted for PowerPoint, but the next step is to add the regression. Part. So I'm going to pause the video here and then make pick up from here and make the regression one based off of this one. Okay, so I um, hope this one helps you. Thank you for your time.